My name's Mick, I drive cars, and welcome to my BMW 440i Grand Coupe review. This car looks absolutely stunning in this dark blue paintwork. The walk around footage from the GoPro doesn't really do the car justice in just how fantastic it looks, so I thought I'd share these clips with you so you can get a better idea of just how good it looks, exterior and interior. Let's get into the video, hope you enjoy. Initial impressions. This car is just lovely. <laughs> it's been a while since I've driven like a bigger saloon type car. And this car is just so relaxing and refined and easy. And I just really like it. It's got the um, M Sport adaptive suspension. So in comfort mode, it is really like soft and comfy and pillowy. And the, the torque converter automatic, the ZFA speed, is just really flexible and easy to use. The steering's super light because I've got it in uh, like comfort mode or whatever it is. You've got the creamy six cylinder up front just wafting you along. I mean, the engine needs like 1000 RPM <laughs> to do stuff. It's honestly, it's really nice. It's a little bit different to a lot of the cars I'm usually in because it feels very grown up. These cars, especially brand new, were for the businessmen that didn't want to be so garish as to buy an M3 and really stand out in the car park. But he wanted something with a little bit of poke, something that's great at wafting, got a lot of power, but a little bit understated. The paint on this car is absolutely phenomenal. Um, Hasib's done a few little bits like the, uh, the M4 wheels and the rear diffuser, and it's set the car off. I think it looks fantastic with these wheels on. If I had to choose an everyday car, I don't think I could think of many things better than this. It's quite reasonably priced. Hasib tells me on a motorway run he'll get 30 plus MPG even though it's a 3 litre straight six. And BMW straight sixes have always been like that. It's super comfortable and refined. I mean, I've got it in sport mode, or sport plus now, and the suspension is just, it just eats everything that comes into its way. It's really nice. Just a quick word about this car's motorway manners. Absolutely fantastic. Really, really good. Probably the best motorway car I've driven yet. And like, I was at two and a half thousand RPM there and you don't even notice because that, that engine is so smooth. I think you've got to get a six cylinder BMW. That's the key. If you get a four cylinder or, a, I've heard horror stories about the eight cylinders too. But I think the six cylinder BMWs, especially in this type of spec, like slightly understated. <laughs> oh, the engine is a highlight. The engine is definitely a highlight. But yeah, I, do you know what? This automatic, it has that, that classic automatic flavor right so like when you come to a stop if you don't do it smoothly it does like a little bounce or a little wiggle like you stop and it kind of like whoa <laughs> it feels quite soft so why don't we have a little launch shall we i don't actually know how to use the launch control but i'm just going to plant the throttle and see what happens hopefully we don't go over there <laughs> all right let's find out oh yes Oh, she can put the power down. Bit of fun, maybe? <laughs> I really thought the rear would let go, but it's got... It's just got, like, infinite grip in the rear. It's kind of funny. Let's get it over into manual. And let's squeeze that B58 goodness out of it. Second gear. <laughs> it does all right. Do you know what? It's the engine in these things that always makes me really enjoy the drive. The steering wheel is, I mean, you can tell straight away, it's a little bit iffy, but God above that B58 noise. Oh, everyone, oh. <laughs> 
It's, um, Hasim was right. He did tell me to expect the fact that, God, it does pick up speed at a rate, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, Hasim did tell me to expect the fact that it's probably not as fast as the M140i, which I do think he's correct about. There's, um, there's definitely a disconnect between the steering and the wheels. It's not as direct as you would want it to be. There's a little bit of off-center slop, but it's nowhere near as bad as some other cars I've driven. It drives good. I oh, do you know what, guys? I've never been a BMW guy. My dad loves BMWs. So I've always kind of stayed away from the brand just as like an idea of trying to be different, I guess. But there is something about these cars. I get why people like them so much. <laughs> I do understand why people like them so much. Oh, okay. On the brakes, you notice the mass. It is, um, I think it's a 1.8 ton car. So it's a, it's a big girl. She a big girl. And you don't really notice it on power. But on, on the brakes, you definitely notice it. And potentially, if I throw the car into some corners, we might notice it even more there. I'm going to go up into Sport Plus, I reckon. Right, we've got a few of my favorite corners here. Let's have a little bit of fun, shall we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it drives well. It does drive well, this car. It honestly drives really well. Oh... <laughs> I think second gear pull here should be fun. Good to go. <laughs> Let's keep it going. God, it makes a good noise. That classic six cylinder, like howl, wail. I really do like it. It's a good car. And it's, it's so composed on the suspension. Right, I've got one of my absolute favorite corners in the world coming up. This is normally a 40 mile an hour corner in my Megane. Let's see how we do here. I'm gonna try and send it around at 40, but it is kind of scary. Oh, oh you feel the weight big time. Oh, yes. Oh, the car can take it. Absolutely. That feels so good. <laughs> Oh, when you get on gas, wow. Wow. When you get on throttle in the middle of a corner in this car, it just settles the back end, like I always talk about in my videos. Just settles the back end and pushes through the corner from the rear end. God, that's a good feeling. Oh, this is a this is a this is a serious car. This is a nice car. This is a good car. I like this one. This one's fun. This one is fun. So I'm going to blast through this. <laughs> God, it does have a lot of power, doesn't it? It's really nice. It's addictive to press that pedal. <laughs> really cool. I will. The gearbox is not bad. Do you know what? It's a lot better than the one that they had in that Mini, which was also an eight-speed torque converter automatic. This one is definitely better. This is the ZF8 speed, but it doesn't have that kick that you get with a dual clutch. Second gear. <laughs> open diff hurting me there over the bumps. I, I had not noticed the open diff up until that point. <laughs> I had not noticed the open diff up until that point because this car has a much longer wheelbase than that M140i. So I think it's a little bit different in that sense. Let's see what she's got. We'll roll into third gear. Oh God, you don't even need much throttle. It's crazy. Dabber breaks into the corner. Watch her grip up. Okay. <laughs> oh, so much fun. Yeah, did you guys see in the middle of that corner a little bit of understeer that I got? 
I'm gonna try and figure out the gearbox on this car. Let's see what we think about it. A dual clutch has this tendency to feel very snappy and like, almost feels like a manual in terms of when you're in gear, you really know you're in gear. And when you switch between the gears, you get this kick in your back that I've just never felt with a torque converter. And this is meant to be the best torque converter. And I see why people say that, because it's a good box. Watch, downshift, it's straight down. Upshift, it's straight up. I'll do it with the paddles, watch. Upshift, downshift, downshift. There's the tiniest bit of delay, but it's a good box. It's genuinely a good box. It's not like I'm waiting ages for it to do stuff. It is in manual mode. I haven't even figured out what it drives like in normal because I'm driving Spirit today. I want to change my own gears. <laughs> yeah, the car is really well suited actually for these roads. It is a little bit wide, but the soft suspension really helps. Even in sport mode, the suspension is quite forgiving. It's really good. Really, really good. I like it. What do I think about the steering? Well, it's classic BMW steering. It's a little bit woolly. It's a little bit, it's not terrible, but it's not amazing. So you don't get the most feedback that you might hope for, but at the same time, it's direct enough and it's, it weighs up enough. It gives, it gives you enough, even though it doesn't give you everything that you want. That's the, the highest praise I can give any car. It knows what it is. It knows what it wants to be. And this BMW wants to be the ultimate daily driver. It's gonna be super comfy and relaxing and cosseting. And then when you get it out onto a B road, it will make you go quickly and it will scare you a little bit because it, it feels a bit heavy and it doesn't have as much grip as you expect. And, but it's great. It's fun. It's a muscle car. It's a big four door European muscle car. That's what it is. And it, it doesn't pretend to be anything else. There's no carbon in here. There's like, there's wood trim guys. There's wood trim, do you understand? It's so difficult with these BMWs because like on one hand, it's slightly numb and it's more of a cruiser than a, an out and out B road car, but that actually makes it fun. It gives it character. There's one thing that I'm learning, which is that I really highly value character in cars, which I never thought I'd say because I always thought, ah, oh, character is, it's like a, it's a Jeremy Clarkson thing to say. It's a silly thing to say, but it, it's real. And every BMW I've driven so far has this brutish, like tons of power on the straights, little bit wishy-washy on, on the corners, but they, ha they have an identity, which is what that Mini that I drove, that Clubman was really lacking an identity. I, I like this car. It's a good car. 